When you're walking around the city and you'll stop by and look at a liquor store sign, you'll see just this glass and the glass is glowing. And people don't realize that there was an artist that actually made every bend by hand. Neon is a gas. When it's energized, it's bright orange. You can be two miles away in fog and still see a neon sign. Neon was developed pretty much in people's garages. And even to this day, I would say half of the neon that's made in the world is made either in somebody's garage or a little small studio somewhere. I'm on a committee that writes rules for neon and writes rules for fluorescent. And the technology is changing so fast. The neon of yesterday had this big transformer that was zapping and buzzing. And the neon of today is a very small power supply that's indiscernible from incandescent light. My adventures in neon started off in college and I got a job at a company called Let There Be Neon back in the early 80s working with Rudy Stern who brought neon to the forefront in the 70s. He taught me a lot about neon as an art form. Inside each tube, uh, the electrical charge is going through back and forth and it's continually in motion. It's never static. Just by nature, by, by physical principle, it's never static. It's moving, people are responding to it. It's a very dark time right now. A feeling, a depression time, economically, socially, politically. People are responding to it because they feel it's got energy, it's got life, it's got magic to it. Not only is neon magical, its lifespan is measured in generations. Each time you turn it on and off, you gain a little bit of lifespan. So you can walk around the city today and see neon signs that were produced 50 to 80 years ago, still lit. So there's, there's an element of responsibility in creating neon, because unless you break it, it's around for a very long time.